today we're installing these panels. And as you see, we have a long way to go. Mike's been at it a couple hours and I'll show you what that looks like. Come on. So here we have a Crete heat panel. These measure two feet by four feet. So each one covers eight square feet. This is part of the floor heat system that we're installing in the new building. I started working on this a couple hours ago. Uh, the bad news is it's taken a lot longer than what I thought it would. The good news is I'm getting faster with each panel that I install. It's like one of those things, you know, I've never done this before. So if you're looking for a detailed installation video, this is probably not the right one. However, I will be able to tell you things to look out for and what I have been learning throughout this process so far. One of the things that has been slowing me down quite a bit is the 2B limestone that I have here for my sub base. So this is 2B limestone. It's about uh, inch and a half size rock and there's no fines in it. Everybody around here uses this underneath their concrete, all right? So what happens is this. I got this all pretty close within about an inch, and my plan was to come in here, start installing the panels, shoot everything with the laser as I go, and wherever I need a little bit, sprinkle a little bit on there, hit it with the compactor again. But the problem with this 2B limestone is you know, when you use that plate compactor, you'll get little humps and bumps and divots, especially when you turn, and it's just kind of hard to get it perfectly flat. And if it's not perfectly flat, when you put that panel down and you go to walk on it when you're installing your PEX tubing, you know, it'll want to move a little bit, and you don't want that. You want it sitting on a very flat surface. So what I did, it didn't take me long to figure this out. I have a little bit of 2A limestone left outside, so, you know, I had left this about an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch low. So what I do, I come in here with this 2A limestone, sprinkle it on here, and all the 2B limestone I hit with the uh, gas-powered plate compactor. And then this stuff, I just use this, go over it just to kind of compact that, you know, fine layer on top. And it gets you a really nice, good, flat surface. So knowing what I know now, I would not use the 2B limestone if I were to do this again. So I'll take you through the uh, process, how I install these. Now this panel here, it's just about ready to go. I need to notch it to go around that post. But I already cut the end off of that, and I'll show you on a new panel why I did that. So this is the end that butts up against the wall right over there. But before you do that, you cut this uh, tongue off right here and make sure this is tight up against the insulation on the wall. Now these panels are two inches thick. I did find some of them. You can see where they strap them down at some point. They get a little squirrely. See what I mean? Oh, see I that do. little yeah, dent? Yeah. I've got a couple over there that are kind of smashed pretty bad. I don't know if I'll be able to use them. But all in all, they came in pretty good shape. Uh, yeah, two inches thick. And then you have these nubs on here. I showed you these earlier, that PEX tubing. You just kind of walk down it and it'll snap right down in there. Really? 
So that's the quick part. I was telling them a little bit ago, I would not use that 2B limestone again. Since I started using the 2A, it's oh. so much faster. I can get a nice flat surface a lot better. If it's not perfectly flat and you're walking on these, they'll kind of move just a little bit right. and you don't want that. So, oh, okay. but I'm going to pull that panel out. I have over by the door. I'll show them how I notch it we'll put it in and then we'll put a few more panels down. Okay. So this cut here, it's going to be a little bit uh, different than the other ones that I did. I used three inch insulation here and two inch here because this is by the door. Had I used three inch, you know, it came out to about here and I want the concrete to go back underneath the door. So I used two inch here, three inch over here. So I need to notch this next panel accordingly. All right, this little saw here is what I used to notch this out. Uh, disregard this line right here, that's not correct. I need to cut on this line, like this, like this, and like that. All right, we'll see how this fits. Good. All right, now that that uh, one up against the wall is in, Melissa will show you how easy the rest of them go in. But like I said, the grade has to be perfect. Just slide it over, drop it down. Yeah, you can hit it hard. So installation of this uh, so far is going pretty good. I think I mentioned earlier, when you do something for the first time, you know, it can be a little bit rough, but you quickly pick up on things that make it easier. I had actually called around to some contractors that do this type of work uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually before that, trying to line somebody up and everybody's so busy. So I figured, you know what, I'll do it myself. It'll take a couple days, but once we get all this down, uh, I'm gonna call your uncle Jay and uh, Jay will come over, you can count on him, and he'll help me put the uh, PEX tubing in. And that's the sweet part about this system right here is how fast that'll go in. You just walk it down, it'll snap into those nubs there, and then the two manifolds will go over on the wall over there. And, uh, but the company that we bought this from, they gave me a whole plan. I'll show you that here in just a little bit of uh, the different zones and everything. But I hope this radiant floor heat is the way to go because so many people swear by it and a lot of you guys have told me in the comments that absolute must have all that stuff. But uh, it's a lot of work, but once it's done, uh, I think it'll be well worth it. And it's nice looking around here. This side of the building will have five inches of concrete in it. That side over there will have six inches. But with those nubs on it, you know, this side's really only going to have like four and a half. Okay. You, know, you know what I mean? But uh, I shot everything with a laser. It, it's going to be great. Tom will be thrilled with this uh, setup. I know when they show up on a lot of jobs, it won't look like we're doing here. You know All what right. I mean? And that's the thing. I don't know if I'm being over particular. If anybody has used this product before, let me know uh, in the comments if you have any tips or tricks to speed things up. But I'm going to keep working for a little bit. And then uh, later on today, this evening, we're having a small little birthday party, aren't we? Yeah, it's our daughter-in-law, Kate's 30th birthday. Happy birthday, Kate. We love you being a part of our family. And actually, out of all of our family, Kate's probably the most diligent and faithful one that watches all the videos. <laughs> yeah, they went to the zoo today, took uh, grandson Ty and Thea, the, the newborn, uh, that tie, he's a hoot he though. He is a hoot. He is a, uh, he's fitting right into the family. He's an outdoor kid. You can't drag him in the house. I mean, he, uh, when he comes up here, that's all he wants to do is, is be outside, playing with the dogs, running through the woods, you know, looking at the tractors. You know, we talked about this before. Every time he goes up to something, he like hits yeah, it with his hand. Yeah, knock it or hit it. Yeah. Or and he has shorts. Most of his shorts have pockets in them. Yeah. And he seriously like walks with his hands, Stand, in his, hands in his pockets. But so uh, 
definitely an outdoors kid. Oh, he loves it. he yeah. really is. But uh, I'll put a few more panels down. Next, I'm going to show you how I check grade with that laser, my little system that I have here to uh, mark up the ground. But it works pretty good. And uh, next couple of days, I'll be at the other side of that building. I only have about another 60 feet to go that way. Cool. So it's a big building, 2,880 square feet. Is that right? In here. Okay. And then underneath the patio too, but I don't have to do anything out there right tell now. Them back, tell them about back in the day how you'd pull all-nighters. Oh, I wanted to bring that up. I told her, like, I can't pull all-nighters anymore, friends. I used to be able to pull all-nighters, and that's an ongoing joke here in the family. It is an ongoing joke here in the family. Because when we were building the house, uh, you know, I was working all day, and I'd come home and go in there and be working on the interior. Like, we have cedar ceilings in there, and I'd tell them, I'm pulling an all-nighter tonight, and everybody would laugh, and I'd come up there and work until 3, 3.30 in the morning, and then get a couple hours sleep and go to work. And uh, I can't pull the all-nighters anymore. I can't. I know. I said last night, I said, I'm going to pull an all-nighter. And I was doing some stuff. We all just laughed. It was like 10 o'clock. I'm like, done. I'm, yeah. I'm done for. But yeah, that, when you look back, it was kind of dumb, really. But uh, yeah. And then when I would be working in, in the house, uh, sometime you might have seen it in a video, one of hers probably, but we have tongue and groove cedar ceilings. And it's like, a, you know, we use scissor trusses and they're skylights. And some nights you would go up there and work and you'd run like 15, 16 boards and just have a great night. The next night you would go up, you'd put like two up and something would be, you know, jacked up or something. And you end up ripping one of them down and then just leave and got literally nothing done. So sometimes things just click, other times not so much. But uh, I would say my days of pulling an all-nighter is over. I think so. Me too. And, you know, talk about sleep. People don't understand, and maybe I can just speak for myself, I have not understood growing up into my 40s and 50s, I finally understood how valuable sleep is. Mm -hmm. It really is a necessity for your immune system, for your mentality, for functioning. You really need sleep, and so, yeah. yeah. I mentioned the other day, I'm actually, I started walking in the mornings, and I'm, I actually sleep a little bit more than I have for years, and I think... I don't know. I, I mean, I just wake up at four o'clock in the morning, but I find myself staying up a little bit later and then sleeping in just a little bit more. Uh, it's kind of weird, but uh, I thought that's all I needed before, but apparently maybe I needed a little bit more. I think so. And, and if your immune system is trying to work something off, you want to be able to have more sleep to, to boost it, you know, and yeah. make sure you're drinking a glass of orange juice or something, you know, just... I'm sure you all know. Dr. Melissa here. No, I'm not. I'm far she, from it. But I'm she learning. does her homework, I'm though. Like what's important to build our immune system, sleep, and, and what you're putting in your body. Um, you know, it's always good to drink a cold glass of water. And uh, you don't need to flood your system. You know, we always yeah. say, drink water, drink water. A nice cold glass of water will help. And then just see from there. Yeah. Well, I'm going to get busy here, and uh, we'll get some more down, and uh, I'm going to show them how I use that laser. That's been a lifesaver. That was another, she got me that for my yeah. birthday, actually. Between that and the stomper thing. or stamp Plate thing. compactor, or plate which compactor. you hate. But. Not a fan, but, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to get back to work. Sounds good. So I got this next section or two ready to go but I'll still check it with the uh, laser and I want to be at least a quarter inch plus or minus or better. But this 2A limestone makes all the difference in the world compared to that uh, 2B that's underneath this. I'll move this out of the way so uh, you don't have to listen to that. But what my system here is, I'll get some of this ready, you know, get it real close. I'll check grade with the laser. If it's on grade, I just put a little dot. If I need a little bit of stone, I'll put just a little plus sign. And you, normally I'll go like every two or three feet. And if I need some, I've got some 2A limestone in the bucket of the BX. Bring it over, sprinkle a little bit on. Fortunately, I'm really close where it is right now, so I think I use one bucket of stone in the BX to do two whole runs 
of these. So I'm, I'm real close. But like I said, the one thing that I have learned is make sure your material, whatever you're using for sub base underneath these panels, is very easy to get on grade perfectly. It's got to be perfect. I can walk all over these panels now and it kind of feels like, uh, you know, they're sitting on concrete. They're not rocking around or moving or anything like that. And like I said, maybe I'm being too particular. I don't think I am. I think it's important uh, that you get them laying nice and flat. And by the way, Melissa called me out on this. She said she thought that corner was dipping off, but it's actually not. The black lines on the pink insulation is not square with the top. It just looks that way. And I was sure of it. And after she told me, I took the laser over there and checked it out. But uh, yeah, it'll be good. I'm really looking forward to getting this all done. I, I'm, you know, the concrete. Get the concrete in. Uh, I haven't decided for sure, but I think the patio out there is going to look like wood. And I think in here is going to be that rolled slate. I did that video the other day uh, with Tom. He has his channel. Don't forget to check it out. I'll put a link in the description. He just started that channel. But I think we'll do the rolled slate in here in the wood out there. So when I started working on this earlier today, I quickly realized when you see guys installing this in new buildings, why there's a whole crew involved. It takes a lot of work. I mean, it's not real labor intensive, just some raking, a little bit of shoveling, a lot of bending over, but it's not too bad. Uh, just a lot of work for one or two people, especially if you've never done it before. But anyway, like I mentioned earlier, uh, if any of you have used this Crete system, Crete heat panels, let me know in the comments if I'm missing anything or if there's a way to speed this process up. But it'll take a couple days, but uh, we'll get it and uh, that'll be good when it's done. It'll be really nice this winter. It'll be nice and cozy. But you have anything you'd like to add before we wrap I think this? It's great that we can ask any of you that you used this. Have you done this? Have you tried this? What works? What doesn't work? I think that's helpful. Yeah. I think that's great. Who'd we get a tip from the other day? We, um, Who, we uh, talked it a few videos ago about building an event barn, and we had oh, yeah. uh, one of the subscribers built an event barn and sent us a message saying, hey, we've done this. Let's tell you what to do, what not to do. We also, then, um, yeah, we also had a driving instructor oh, yeah. from so, Pennsylvania, yeah, right? Yeah, a Pennsylvania driving instructor. He does driver's tests, and uh, he's in a different part of the state. Or I'd be like, where are you? We'll drive to you. <laughs> bring Eva to But he's like, here's some pointers. Things to do, things not to do. And I really appreciate that. You know, you don't know what you don't know until someone tells you. Right. But uh, things are going well. Uh, I'm a, everybody's adjusting well to me being home. I feel more relaxed. Uh, there's a lot going on. but Ooh, time is flying, yeah. I just don't get excited. And I'm actually really looking forward to hunting season this year. Okay. I am. I just haven't, and when it comes to hunting season, I think I mentioned this before, I don't care if I get a deer, I really don't. I just, on a nice fall day, you know, crisp, cool, there's nothing like being in the woods, out in a tree stand or in a mini cabin, and uh, I haven't been able to do that much the last couple of years, so I'm gonna do that this year. Go sit in a tree or sit in a mini cabin, and the best thing to do is just to watch the forest wake up in the morning. You know, all the squirrels start cruising around, the birds chirping beautiful you can sleep out there i could sleep out there but anyway I've, uh, I've mentioned this in another video so like in the very beginning of your videos it's a joke ready what do you call a deer with no eyes no idea oh uh, you, you remembered <laughs> i didn't think you'd remember all right thanks so much for being here for watching subscribing make sure you comment down below give it a thumbs up and we'll see you on the next one thanks